Hi, this demo is Introduction to Photoshop CS5 Workspace and the Stock Exchange Royalty Free Photo Gallery online. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, have Photoshop CS5 launched. Then I'm going to use the Internet Explorer to go to the website www.sxc.hu, which is the stock exchange, the leading free photography site, okay, royalty free images online. We have an account at school that you can log in as with the login name being Del Oro, all lowercase, no spaces, and the password, the exact same thing, D E L O R O. If you log in, you can use this site to browse and search for images. You can use the randomizer tab to get a random photo. You can randomize as many times as you'd like to find something that might inspire you for your uh, backgrounds or art that you might be doing in this class. You can also search for something. I've preloaded a download for Paris, so I'm going to search for Paris. The first four that show up on your search are premium results. They're going to charge you um, for downloading. The next several hundred are going to be free, royalty free, images that people have uploaded for you to use um, for your art. Okay, so I found one on this list. There's about 50 pages worth. When you find one, okay, you click on it. It takes you to a second page. This is the thumbnail. You do not want to right click and save here. Okay, you want to make sure you click on this thumbnail to bring up the second window to download the full version. Now at school, this might take longer than you want to wait, but it is a royalty free image that you can use for your art. Um, I've preloaded one, so I'm going to minimize this window. And I've already let this one download. Uh, this picture is already fully downloaded from the site. Once it's downloaded, right click save picture as go ahead and put it to where you want I'm gonna use my folder that I have the Z Drive computer core um, projects or assignment files you might want to create a new folder in here for stock images and I'm going to title this Paris 1. It's saved as a JPEG file. Remember that name, JPEG file. So I hit save. Now I'm able to work on it in Photoshop. I'm going to show you two separate things. One, you can file, open a file in Photoshop. I'm going to find the stock image. There's Paris 1. I hit open. That's how to open a file in Photoshop. You can also file new, start a new document with different presets. A custom will let you tell it how many inches you want your canvas size to be, what resolution you're going to work in, and resolution has to do with quality of the image. If you're working on it for computer use, 72 pixels per inch is fine. For print, you might want to raise your resolution. Color mode, RGB color, is perfect for computer use. If you are working on it for print, CMYK color would work as well. I'm going to leave it as RGB, 72, and I'm going to go ahead and make this 5 by 7. I hit OK, and now I have a new document. The checkers in the background symbolize transparency. In your workspace, these are your tools in your toolbox or tools panel. Each tool has options that are with that tool. This is your options bar. So as you can see, each tool has different options that go with it. At the top, you have your menu bar, which has further options for editing your image. Right now, this document is blank. It has nothing in it. This document is a JPEG file that we downloaded from the internet. In here, I'm going to show you how to crop and rotate. I can go to image, image rotation, and you can rotate your image. 
if for some reason it was not how you wanted it. You can rotate your image. If for some reason you want to crop it to fit a certain size, if you go to Window or View, Rulers, these rulers will appear and you can click and drag and use these guides to specifically measure out the size of your image. So if I wanted to take off a little bit here and take off a tad at the bottom and maybe even a tad at the side here and a tad at the side here, it gives you cropping guides. Then you can use your crop tool and simply draw a box around, right click, crop, and I've taken off part of my image. That's cropping. And I can go to view, clear guides to get rid of my guide marks that I used. I can also move this layer to my new image. So I'm going to take this image here, right click, duplicate layer, I'm going to make a copy of it so I don't mess up my original. Now I have background one, this layer is active because it's blue, I can turn it off with the eyeball, I can turn this off with the eyeball. So now I have two layers of the same image. Now I want to right click, duplicate the layer but send it to my untitled document that I set to be 5 by 7. Now if I click on untitled 1, I have a picture in this window. Okay, now I'm going to move this around my screen. Notice how the picture is very, very large compared to my canvas size. That's because the resolutions did not match up, which is totally fine. I'm going to scale this image by using Control and T to activate the transform icon. I can use control minus to zoom out and you can see the box around my image using the shift command and clicking in the corner. Holding down shift and clicking in the corner I can scale my image to fit my canvas. Control plus plus sign will zoom me in to my screen. I'm going to go ahead and use my move tool right here and then click apply my transformation. Now my image fits in my, my window. Notice if I hit control T and I do not use the shift command. This distorts my image. Now distorting is good for some instances, but you don't want to distort your image to ruin the integrity of the image. So this is not the Eiffel Tower, right? It's a distorted version of it. So you want to don't apply. When you use the Control T transform command to scale your image, you use the shift button to keep the proportionality of your image intact. So now I have this image set in my 5x7 window in Untitled 1, and I have it in here under the original. In here, I'm going to show you how to add layers. So I'm going to add a layer of text using my text tool. I'm going to click in here and just type in Paris. Move it up. Put it right there in the middle or up here in the top. And now I have a layer that I can uncheck if I want, titled Paris, my background copy, and my original first layer of this document. Okay, now I'm going to move into adding a filter, which are fun ways to add effects to your image. If I go up here to the filter tab on my menu bar, you can open up the filter gallery and you can play around with an artistic filter which as you can see each has their own 
benefits. Hit OK. And now I have a cutout filter of my image. Control, Alt, and Z is undo. Now I'm going to make copies of this so I can show you several different filters. So I'm going to duplicate the layer. Hit OK. Duplicate the layer again. Hit OK. Duplicate the layer again. Hit OK. Now I have four of the same. This is my original. Background copy two. I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to do that same cutout that I just had. I'm going to turn those two off. Go to background copy three. Go to filter. And I'm going to show you what a neon glow would do. Hit OK. And then turn that off and go to four. Go to filter. Maybe show you what is in the sketch tab or maybe photocopy. The photocopy is taken on this background image, so I'm going to go ahead and make this white and this black back to filter and now try to photocopy <laughs> now it's more black and white doesn't look too good Okay, well, as you can see, I have that filter, that filter, that filter, and the original.